Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that'll have plot synopsis and character bios for this issue. The New Mutants number 9 from 1983. We've got a cover here where we're going to see Cannonball versus Sunspot. And here you see um, Wolfsbane and um, Mirage, who's uh, going by Psyche during this time, and uh, uh, some kind of Roman uh, individual with the thumbs down. If you remember, we're picking up where um, the last issue sort of left off. Um, real quick, I have a playlist. I have an X-Men playlist for just the X-Men. I have a New Mutants playlist for just the New Mutants. But I also have an X-Universe playlist where I put everything in there in reading order. So I've got um, X-Men and Marvel Fanfare and the Wolverine Limited series and New Mutants, everything um, as it has... Uh, in reading order. So check out the X-Universe one if you are interested in everything. I start with Classic X-Men number one and work my way up. So, all right. Here we go. Arena. Chris Claremont writes, Sal Buscema is a penciler, but we have a different inker. Tom Mandrake. Orzakowski is still the letterer. Has been since issue one. The dude is a warrior. He also is the letterer on, on Uncanny X-Men. Glynis Ween is the colorist. Louise Jones is still the editor. So, and so we see these Romans individuals um, bring them here to Nova Roma, which means New Rome. And so here is the city that they were looking for. Of course, Sunspot is angry. His mother appears to be dead. They're still holding Amara here. Amara has been playing possum. He's like, please don't betray me. They are also looking for me. Um, so they take him into the dungeon here. I do apologize that I am not reading. Normally, I, I read along with you, but sometimes with these... Um, X-Men books because Chris Claremont is so wordy and so much stuff that they can get to be 45 minutes long. So I've been trying to limit how long they are here. So again, they're taken into the dungeon and they're asked um, Wolfsbane to make sure that no one is listening. And she's like, no sound or scent nearby, Danny. We are alone. And she goes, oh, the stench of this place. How can people stand this filth? And of course, uh, Sunspot's like, it's a dungeon rain. It's supposed to be disgusting. And she's like, some explanations are in order. So uh, Amara says her name, Amara Juliana Olivia Aquila. So... My father is Lucius Antonios Aquila, first senator of Nova Roma. I am truly sorry about your mother, Roberto. I pray she is still alive or her death was quick and without pain. Could she be in the city? And she said, Amara says, if she were, she would be here. And everybody looks at him and he's, of course, a hothead. And he's like, I want no sympathy. Just leave me to my rage. He is uh, quite the angry guy. So, And so uh, Danny says, You were disguised as an Indian when we first met. You're deathly afraid of being discovered. Hardly the behavior of a senator's daughter. And he says, We're not all Roman. Much of the city is descended from the Incas. Um, who fled here centuries ago. Um... And so Nova Roma is a republic, but the Incas were an absolute monarchy. A faction has arisen seeking to transform Rome into the same kind of imperial state. I'm part of the opposition to that party. If my father's enemies learned of my activities, it could ruin him politically and cause the republican cause with him. 
Republican not in the party Republican, Republican in uh, the people that wanted Rome to be a republic. Um, so, um, while you're interested in my mother's expedition, as San surmised, we were wary of strangers. Uh, New Rome has survived as long as it has solely because of its isolation. And Sunspot is like, oh no, Rain is like, I don't trust her. And Sunspot is, nor do I. And uh, um, Cannonball is like, why? Well, what's Amara done to you? If she isn't telling us everything, it's probably because she's scared and she doesn't lie to us. So Sam's taking a little bit. Um, so um, she's not told us the truth, the whole truth. She's intentionally keeping stuff back. I can sense it. And uh, Danny's like, I wish Professor Xavier was here or I was a telepath like him. But then she uses her power. And here you can see Amara kind of being tossed. And she's like gasps because she can't believe that she did that here and it scares her and of course she's like it was an accident she's always like it's an accident so all right sun uh sunspots had enough he busts open the door but there were there was security all these darts which contains uh not poison but maybe some kind of narcotic to knock him down and down goes the new mutants so all right so the senators are having a bath because, hey, bathing was a big thing in Rome. Um, and so they are all speaking Latin. And so this is um, one of these people here is uh, Amara's dad. And then one of these people is uh, this person here. Sorry. This person here is his rival. So, okay. So this is Amara's dad here. And so... Um, uh, let's see here. Um, Marcus D D uh, Domitius, a word with you. I'm in a rather hurry, Aquila, urgent state business having to do with the outlanders captured this morning. Lord Gavio, how could you have known? And he's like, be silent, Centurion. They're children, I believe, two boys and three girls, about my daughter Zamara's age. Your spice keep you well informed as always. And so the senator is like, I prefer to think of them as patriotic citizens. What, pray, tell are your intentions toward these prisoners? And he's like, the laws are quite specific. It makes no provision for age. The boys will go to the arena. If they survive, they will join the girls in the auction block to be sold into slavery. And he's like, splendid. I know the commander of our civic guard won't fail in his duty. And he's like, your faith in me is touching. Now, if you'll excuse me. And so um, the senator's like, you'd rather see me in that arena. Hey, God, uh, Gajo, or is it Gallo? I think it's Gallo because um, I'm all that stands between you and your ambition. And if I must sacrifice the children to stop you, then I shall. So, of course, he is angry, asks for wine, <laughs> calls him a plebeian pig. And so here comes Celine. This is the Celine. Uh, this is her first appearance. Uh, she is married to this guy. This is the Celine that ends up uh, joining the Hellfire Club as the Black Queen. So, um, like I said, her first appearance here. So she goes, Welcome home, husband. A bad day. And so um, he kind of tells him. Um, about what happened. He says of the powers that they have, and he says, and if he had that power, no one would be able to stand against him. I love the screen tones being used. Uh, but thanks to Lucius Aquila, I'm forced to uphold the law and deliver them to the arena. And so Selene is like, and how often have I heard you curse him and wish him dead? I can accomplish that task with ease. He says, no, Selene. When Aquila falls, I want it to be by my hand. I would rather not resort to your black arts. And Selene says, the day will come, Roman, and sooner than you think, when my black arts may be your only hope of salvation and victory. So down they're going to go. They have another dungeon uh, here, this is underneath uh, their villa here, and this is uh, this was uh, one of the workers on the boat, and uh, of course they also speak English because hey, why not? 
And so he says, this is Castro. He serves a great lord in the east, meaning uh, Sunspot's dad, who wishes to exploit the natural wealth of this land. An alliance would benefit you both. In return for mining rights, he would provide weapons, guns, whatever assistance you require. Of course, as an intriguing proposition, you are quite right to introduce a Selene. Bring upstairs, provide food, wine, proper attire, but first give the wretch a bath. He smells awful. There, in those more comfortable surroundings, we shall continue our talk. So, all right. So, the girls are being prepared to be sold into slavery. And so, they're talking about uh, Rain's hair because it's red. And so... Um, they kind of playing and Amara's like, don't drink that. It's been poisoned or not poisoned, drugged, uh, but it's too late. Um, sh they're drugged. So, and this lady, uh, she says, uh, she ordered more drugs and then they'll have another, uh, more in the morning. Um, that way they'll be cheering right along with the rest of the crowd when their companions fight each other to the death. Of course, Amara overhears, and they're like, oh, no. So she's going to go down and try to get them up here so that they escape. But, of course, they're drugged and don't do that. And she goes and wonders why she's not affected. But suddenly, of course, she gets affected afterwards. That's uh, very convenient. And suddenly, here is Celine. Um... And Celine says, how flattering, Amara, after all this time you remember me. Have you, um, you've no idea how glad I am that our paths have finally crossed. You're a gift from the gods I shall make very good use of. So, um, so here are the gladiators and Sunspot and um, Cannonball are being held in chains here. And Cannonball says, any luck with those chains, Bobby? And he says, no use. I can't summon my power to break them. And that guy says, it's the drug that makes you weak to keep you out of uh, mischief till the games. What happens then? Plucky little lads, aren't you? You fight, boy. Us, for starters. So, if you survive, you'll have proven yourselves worthy to become slaves of Nova Roma. Your luck, your... Uh, you lucky like us, maybe you get a chance to earn freedom, become citizens. So, and Cannonball says, hardly seems a fair match with us being drug. And he says, don't worry, Outlanders, when the Lanistas finish his work, you'll be ready and willing to take on the army barehanded. So, all right, so here we go. Everybody's getting ready because, hey, um, the uh, arena was a big uh, deal for the Romans. Here is Danny and Rain. So, again, they're drugged. And here come the um, gladiators. All honored to the Senate and the people of and glory of Rome. We who are about to die salute you. So, all right. And uh, here come the kids. And, of course, they're going to drug them because, hey. And so, um... Cannonball doesn't think that's very nice of them to do. And this guy says, We did, indeed, Outlander. Those people out there paid good money to see a good show. It's my job not to disappoint them. In a minute or so, you'll be both consumed by a resistible berserker fury that'll give you a madman's strength, endurance, and resistance to compensate for your lack of skills at arms. You could be torn to ribbons or do the same to someone else, or you won't feel a thing. Um, you'll only stop when you're maimed or killed or you've run out of appointment, uh, opponents, sorry. Fight well, slaves. Bobby, resist the drug. We're not killers. Speak for yourself, Sam. Of course. And so he turns into, um, Sunspot here and tosses these two. And of course, they all see it here and look at the, the two ladies and so, here they come. So, Sam uses his power, breaks the vehicles, and he's invulnerable. Um, they run over, the horses run over this poor dude here. Here comes Sunspot in between the horses, grabs the carriage here. 
and gets him out, not hurting the horses like a good hero. Uh, they try to get rid of um, Cannonball, but it does not work as he goes right through. And then he um, ends up accidentally running into Sunspot, but that is what they needed because now they're about to fight. Remember, they're drugged here. So so this guy says, oh, hey, what if those barbarians turn against us? He says, for all their power, my dear Gaius, they remain only human. Should things get out of hand, five score crack archers stand ready to send them to their ancestor. So, all right. So here they come and fight and they bonk. Immovable object and such. Uh, irresistible force. So um, they go and they fight and look at Rain. Kill him, my love. Kill him. And... Uh, and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, no, wait, no, don't kill him. So uh, great using um, some more um, screen tones here. And uh, they're about to stop her. And, of course, she gets rid of them, turns into the wolf. Off she goes. And uh, Danny uses her power to generate a picture of Professor Xavier, which snaps the two of them out. And so here she comes here. Cannonball apologizes to him. And Sunspot also then apologizes to him. Check it out here. There was a... Um, oh, no, it's the armor. I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Um, it was the armor here. So, of course, they all think that they're demons here. And so they're about to um, uh, kill him, but... This guy says, lay down your bows, citizens of Nova Roma. This is not the time for fear, but rejoicing. Our most ancient prophecy has been fulfilled. As editor of these most sacred games, I bestow on these children the laurel wreath of triumph. So, uh, behold, citizens, the one whose hair marks her as a descendant of our divine patron, Gaius Julius Caesar. Um... The, and whose miraculous transformation reveals her to be of the same blood. So they're talking about Wolfsbane. Um, as the she-wolf who suckled Romulus and Remus, founders of Mother Rome herself, these are not children of men, but of immortal gods, and I welcome them among us. And so Bobby's like, they're cheering. Uh, maybe, and uh, um, Danny says, hear that rain, everything's going to be just fine. And so Cannonball says, maybe so, Danny, but I'll believe it when I see it. And, of course, next issue, Betrayal. So, excellent. So, this video was, uh, uh, did not take the, the f even 30 minutes. So, uh, we're about 18 minutes right now. So, um, The New Mutants, number nine, Chris Claremont and Sal Buscema. Like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.